Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Dr. Alessandro. And in this video, I'm going to be describing the process by which we get to dentures. So uh, the conventional and not immediate dentures. So conventional dentures, of course, are a form of replacement for missing teeth. And to me, uh, in my opinion, and in that of many others, they're a form of last resort. Uh, they are by no means an excellent way of replacing teeth. And for many, not even good. Um, upper dentures, in my opinion, and many others, are satisfactory, sort of. Lower dentures are really kind of the worst of the worst type of solution uh, to replace missing teeth. But if there's no other way around it, then that is the way that it has to be done. So how do we get to dentures? Well, when a patient comes in for a denture appointment, for a first appointment to start the process of getting a denture, typically what we do is, you know, we go over the health history and everything along those lines, and then we get uh, initial molds or impressions. So we use conventional trays such as this one uh, to get initial molds or impressions. And of course the laboratory will create models, stone models like this one. This one happens to have teeth, but uh, that are, of course, a little bit on the damaged side. But the laboratory will do that once we send out the molds um, and, and they'll, they'll create a second step. But the other thing that we do in the first step is we can also get the shade of the teeth uh, for the patient. So the patient can pick which color he or she wants their teeth to be on the denture. Now, um, you know, it is a patient choice, so if they choose to have super bright white that you need sunglasses to look at, that's their choice. If that's what makes them happy, that's what makes them happy. Uh, they can have realistic colored. If they happen to have teeth that were coffee stained, um, perhaps they choose a darker shade just to make it look more realistic, as if uh, well, when they had teeth and, and their teeth happened to be stained, and now it looks like they have their teeth again, as, as they were. Um, photographs can be helpful in this. So if a patient brings photographs, you can certainly take a picture of that picture or send that picture if you get permission from the patient to the laboratory and they can try to customize a shade for you. So that's something that can be done. Uh, and the shade selection can happen at this visit and at the next visit as well, uh, actually next two visits. Uh, so there's time before you actually get that information to the laboratory. But the first visit is always a helpful one for that. The second visit. So once you send these initial molds from the trays, which are usually goopy, they're called alginate imp impressions. Um, it's a very goopy material. Um, once you get send that to a laboratory, they make stone models, as I showed you, and then they send you back something called a custom tray. Now, a custom tray looks like this, typically blue, a material we know as triad. Um, it could be other material, but typically that's what it's used. It's a light cured material. So they make these special trays. With these trays, we take the final mold, which is supposed to be the more accurate impression or mold of the remaining tissue that's there. And this will serve to kind of build the actual denture upon. So this is in a super critical step. Now, the initial impressions are also important because you need to have a good custom tray in order to get a good final impression. But this impression is the key. If this is a good final impression for you, then you will have the best possible fitting dentures. Now, I say best possible fitting. Um, uppers usually have a good fit. Lowers, mm, they'll be as good as they can be. Uh, so you send this type of impression, the final impression, off to the laboratory again which comes to the third step, which is recording bases with wax rims. Now, a recording base looks a little bit like this type of a tray. Um, it's gonna be typically blue as well, but it'll have a wax rim or horseshoe on it. Now, both upper and lower. So it looks like basically two blue trays with two pink horseshoes on top. Uh, what does that do? That's basically to try to get the bite or how the teeth come together. This is a super important step. So we are trying to do something extremely critical, which is to replicate how the patient's teeth came together and met. Um, and that's really important for chewing. We're also trying to get the right spot for your sound. That is, 
how you speak your speech, which is really, really important because you don't want to sound really unusual, you know, like talking like Daffy Duck or something along those lines uh, with your dentures. So this third step with the wax rims and getting the bite is really critical. So the better you can try to replicate how you bit down originally when you had teeth, um, you know, the better the chance you're going to have dentures that work for you. Uh, we do that. We get these wax rims. Once we see that we have everything kind of in a spot that's repeatable, we will take a bite registration. Now, sometimes we use this blue material. Sometimes people use a green material called Aluwax. Uh, I'm sure that there are other variants. Um, every dentist is trained by different schools, so different schools do things differently. So you may have uh, a number of different approaches to this, uh, but the bite is the most important thing uh, because otherwise you'll be biting too early, which will keep your dentures wide open in the front, or you'll be biting too far down and you'll kind of sink in to your bite. Uh, so that's step three. Now, step four. Step four is what's called the wax trine. This step is really, really important. So in the wax try-in, the lab has sent back the teeth, they're your denture teeth, that are set in wax. That is, they are you know, set up as they're supposed to be, but they are in wax, so things can be changed. So if we try everything in and the bite is not quite right, we as dentists can adjust things to make it right. Or if the arrangement of the teeth isn't quite right, we can always rearrange things so that they look better for the patient. Or if for whatever reason, the teeth, just the appearance of the teeth, maybe the, the shape or the form of the teeth isn't quite pleasing to the patient or the shade isn't quite pleasing to the patient, we can change that. This is the most important step where a patient, you, know, you have to speak up, you have to tell us, hey, I really don't like how this looks. Like something isn't quite right. This color, not thrilled with it. Those teeth, they look too small or too big. Whatever the case may be, if it's not making you happy, you gotta let us know. And we can change that. We can send it back to the laboratory and say, hey, do you have a different shade or do you have a different mold or shape of the tooth that is more wide, narrow, long, short, whatever the patient wants. And they can change that and we retry everything in. So if everything is workable though, if everything looks good, feels good, the bite's right, everything is working otherwise. Now we send it to the lab for the last step, the fifth step, which is to make the actual denture, which is typically in something called acrylic. All right, that material is then sent back to us so we have the actual dentures. So at the fifth visit, we try them in. We make sure, again, everything's working. Um, and if everything's working, if the fit's right, the bite's right, and everything is good, um, you know, we send the patient home, and this is the one and only time we'll tell a patient, hey, you are allowed to wear your dentures uh, to bed tonight. You can wear them overnight because otherwise we do not want you wearing your dentures overnight. Uh, that will cause tissue problems for your soft tissues and it can be not so healthy. So think about it as, uh, for example, your shoes. Do you go to sleep with your shoes on? Typically not because we got to let our feet rest. We got to let our feet breathe. Well, the same thing applies to our mouths. If you have dentures, you got to take them out at night so that the tissues can breathe and, and can kind of restore themselves a bit. Uh, like I said, the first night with dentures is the only night we'll tell you, hey, keep them in and then we'll see you tomorrow, ideally, to see if there are any sore spots to adjust them. So denture adjustments. There can be one, there can be many. Every denture and every person is different. So um, there's always probably going to be at least one minimum. Uh, and that's actually a good case but there can be dozens of adjustments. And keep in mind, uh, for those of you who are going through the denture process, uh, it is a process, it is a journey, and um, you know, it does take time to adapt to these. Uh, they are you know, pieces of acrylic plastic, if you wanna call them that, that are now in your mouth. And so your mouth will take time to adapt to them. You will have to adapt a little bit to speech, to salivation. You will salivate more with them, at least at first. Um, so there are going to be changes. Uh, your taste may be different. A lot of changes that go on with dentures. So these are really, really important things. Um, 
to know and, and to understand uh, that it is not just a, hey, we're going through this and it's done. Uh, it may take many months afterwards. And um, another thing that can happen. So say in a part of the journey, a patient manages to lose a lot of weight. Uh, he or she went through a fitness program or regimen or went through a diet because of their health and lost a bunch of weight. Your dentures may not fit or not as well or not at all if you lose a lot of weight say 50 to 70 pounds. Uh, so with that, just keep that in mind that things could require adjustment based upon life changes. So that said, hopefully I have covered everything for you. Uh, dentures are a difficult topic. You know, we wanna make sure that they're done as well as they can be certainly and they're as pleasing as they can be. Um, and it, but just realize there are limitations. Uh, the uppers could potentially be a good fit for you. But lowers, unfortunately, can be really trying. And so it takes a lot of patience with lower dentures. So, all right. I'm wishing you the best of the day and hope you're all staying well and healthy. Thank you for joining me.